after a narrow defeat to France on match day one. The Italy team showed just one change with Luke McLean coming in at full back for the injured David Odiete. Italy had lost nine of their previous ten tests at home, including five in a row in the RBS Six Nations. England made three changes from the side that beat Scotland. Courtney Laws, Mako Vunapola and Ben Youngs all came into the starting 15. England with a perfect 21 wins out of 21 in all test matches against Italy. The home side gave their supporters something to cheer about in the ninth minute when Carlo Canna found the mark with his first kick of the match. The Italians three points ahead and a good start for Jacques Brunel's men. And the Italian scrum was penalised by New Zealand referee Glenn Jackson. It was a chance for England to level matters. One of England's vice captains, Owen Farrell, stepped up to the kick and put it over for three all. Farrell and Canna then swapped penalties for six points apiece before England struck a major blow in the 24th minute. The super score with Youngs finding Vunapola. Nice quick hands from him to Farrell. He picked out George Ford who dived over in the corner for the opening try. A tidy finish from the bath out half. A wonderful work from Vunapola and Farrell to set it up. Farrell's conversion struck the upright but England led 11 points to six. But Italy had a chance to narrow the gap to two points when Ben Youngs was penalised for a high challenge on Parise. Canna landed the penalty to bring it back to 9-11. And that's how it stood at half-time. The early stages of the second half saw both sides probing without creating clear-cut scoring chances until Italy pressed the self-destruct button. Leonardo Sarto played a dangerous pass towards Campagnaro and Jonathan Joseph intercepted to sprint towards the line for an easy score. It was good anticipation from the Bath centre and a killer blow to Italy's hopes on the day. The score under the posts and it left Farrell with the simplest of tasks to convert for 18 points to 9. It didn't take long for Eddie Jones' men to extend that lead further as Italy seemed to wither under pressure Danny Kerr delivered a beautifully weighted grubber kick for Joseph to get on the end of, and he was in for another try. When the sides met at Twickenham last season, Joseph scored two tries, and he had two more here. Once again, Farrell added the extras to leave it 25 points to nine. Into the last quarter of the match, Farrell tagged on three more points for 28-9 as the men in white looked to be cruising. And Joseph continued his unforgettable half of rugby, completing his hat-trick of tries inside the last ten minutes. This time, demonstrating his strength, having already showcased his speed and tactical awareness earlier. England's last hat-trick scorer in the Six Nations was Chris Ashton against Italy five years ago. Joseph now had his own to celebrate. 33 points to nine, the score. There was still time for England to add further points. As they poured forward, substitute Jamie George produced a wonderful offload to his Saracens teammate Farrell, and he was over for a fifth English try of the afternoon. The job was done for Eddie Jones' side. The win was comprehensive. Farrell converted his own score to clock up 40 points to Italy's nine. And that finished off the scoring on a very satisfactory day for England, who, like France, have two wins from two games played. Perhaps it's appropriate that the team with a red rose on their jersey should be winners on St Valentine's Day. They face Ireland at Twickenham next time. A bruised Italy take on Scotland in Rome. The final score at the Stadio Olimpico, Italy 9, England 40.